Okay, welcome everyone. This is the uh, first meeting of the Public Works Advisory Commission. It's December 10th, 2014. Um, and first order of business is the opportunity for public comment. All right, I'll start off with the first Mr. comment. Mr. Kozowski, uh, yes, we'd like to hear from you. I'd like to commend you all for all the work you did as members of the Board of Public Works. I know you put an awful lot of time in and you took a lot of heat on some very difficult subjects, namely the landfill and the stormwater enterprise fund. I'm a little worried that you're going to be having your wings clipped with this new committee since you don't have any control over any money anymore. And that's the big issue, is the control of money. The Board of Public, the Department of Public Works has control over four enterprise funds. <coughs> and I don't know if there's any distinct lines between those funds anymore. You know, we did have an issue in the past with employees from one enterprise fund being taken from that enterprise fund and paid for by that enterprise fund to plow snow. I don't know if that ever got resolved. And I often think that we should have had extra commissions created. We should have a sewer commission. We should have a water commission. We should have an enterprise or a stormwater commission. And we should have a solid waste commission. And get some public input into how that money is actually expended and that it's expended in the manner that it's intended to be. So it's going to be an interesting evolution here to see whether you're just going to be rubber stamping or whether you're actually going to have some meaningful input into what happens with the Department of Public Works. That's my two cents. Thank you. <coughs> OK. Uh, first order of business is the minutes from the Final Board of Public Works meeting on November 12th. Move approval. Second. Any updates or comments? But they look great. Awesome. Play over the bang. All in favor of approving those <coughs> final Board of Public Works meeting minutes? Aye. 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 Uh -huh. Great. Uh, next, establishment of commission rules. Um, I, by rules, do you mean the so the new package is this document that BJ sent out earlier today, mm -hmm. copies for you tonight. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's an outline of the organization and what you can do and how you do it. And I actually worked on some rules I haven't distributed yet, but I got some comments from Jim on it too. And just trying to establish how your meetings are run, how often you want to have them, the time you want to have them, the location you want to have them. These are all rules that need to be set up as a new commission now. So um, obviously we typically meet on a Wednesday night at 5.30. Do we continue that? Do we meet at 5 or do we change the date to Thursday? It's really a commission's choice, whatever works best. Um, I know the workload will be less on the commission going forward also without signing contracts, but I'm still looking to see the same level of hopefully input and advisement to me and the department as to recommendations for moving, moving forward to the mayor, especially on the capital plans, the budgets, um, policies, things of that nature. Jump right in. Anyone? I like Wednesdays. <laughs> I was going to make a motion that we continue to meet on Wednesdays at 5.30 every other, you know, twice a month, however we want to do that. But that's, I would, make that a little bit clearer. I, I move that we continue to meet on a regular basis uh, following the past schedules twice a month at 5.30 on Wednesday. I would second that. Any comment? I see heads nodding, but any? Who knows? No. I mean, uh, yeah. you know whether it's enough or yeah. not enough, too much. If we start with that, we can, <coughs> like we have in the past, say I don't think there's a we need to have a meeting <coughs> next month, or we can have a meeting with it. A lot of times we s establish our meetings depending on when we thought there was going to be a lot of documents to sign. Mm -hmm. So we can always cancel meetings. And many of us might have already created our schedules around our existing schedule. You have to think about it? No, my schedule's in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great way to start. You yeah. see what happens? And we can always dial it back. 
is it more convenient for the staff if we met at five rather than five thirty? I mean, we're hanging around for an extra half an hour. That's uh, is that what, you. I, I don't I'm know what the reason for five thirty was as opposed to five. I didn't. Admit they didn't <coughs> it used to be seven. Oh, I know that. And um, yeah. this. We, we had to move it to 5.30 because of some conflict once, and the staff loved it. Okay. I'm not, it could even have been... Okay. Well, I'm just wondering whether 5 is simply back the staff. George's. I mean, this, staff this goes back one, some years. Most of the workload shifts to the staff here, so yeah. in terms of them and having things ready for us, maybe it's simpler to have it at 5.30 or 6. I'm just wondering whether 5 is simpler. I is fine. I mean, it's, really up to, it's really up to you, right, in terms of... You've got, you guys all work, or most of you work. <laughs> Not that we don't. But you need, you need time to get here, right? I mean, that's 5.30 is fine with me, 7 was fine You're with me. You're just jealous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I leave at work at 4.30, so to get here for 5 for a meeting... So, so is it illegal? Is Tough. It's illegal. <laughs> yeah. Got it. I know that the public has waited on that in the past. Some people really complained about the 7, some people complained about the 5.30. But, um, I think the 5.30 works pretty well. Oh, it works good for you, Dick. <laughs> Five thirty is fine. All right. but I'm wondering about the rest of the public. You know, it's, it's a tough show. Well, you're here <laughs> in their stead, so but since I don't work. All right. So you want to have a vote on? It? Do we vote? No, we already voted. Oh, we yeah, had we a motion. We those rules yet. Right, but we voted on the day and time. Uh, right. No, there's a motion and no, a second. No, we we voted, voted on the minutes. We approved the meeting. All right, all right. I'm ready to vote. Okay, ready to go? Yeah. All right, everyone in favor of continuing in the present schedule, alternate Tuesdays, Wednesdays at uh, 5.30. I, I just request a clarification. I thought it was the second and fourth. Yes, it is. It's not alternate. Yeah, good point. Plan is we're going to follow the old schedule. Okay. Off to a great start. All right, nicely so done. The, so the other thing that's happened with this administrative order um, the Shade Tree Commission's gone, so we've lost our board member representative to that. Uh, Transportation Parking Commission, um, Gary's no longer part of that, part of the administrative order. He can apply as a citizen if he cares to continue with that. The Conference Committee is gone um, at this point, but uh, at last Thursday, City Council meeting, I placed this in your folder. There's an ordinance being moved through to establish a Public Works Committee that would provide some form of conversation piece between City Council, yes. Public Works Commission, Department of Public Works, wow. still. Um, I didn't stay around for the first reading, but I assume it passed and is working to a second reading as, as we speak. The other one is all, all claims for enterprise funds will be going through the Maya, which is our insurance carrier. So the claims committee is no longer. And um, we do have some standing committees that we need to vote to reestablish, like the reuse committee. Uh, we also have the committee that is studying asset management for us, comprehensive wastewater management plan, the water asset management plan, and so on. Um, those are the two ones that come to my mind right away that um, need to be discussed and reformulated if necessary. I might have misunderstood you, but I thought this, the council was, the minutes is the membership, the committee shall consist of three city councilors, and I thought I read, probably in the paper, that staff would be part of it, but I didn't read that, that commission members would be part of this committee. Well, what it's, they're not part of the committee, but what it says is that they can make uh, they may require any member of a multi-member body, which is this commission, mm -hmm. or any city employee to appear before it to give it information. Oh, okay. So it's not part of the but there's that exchange of information. Right. So they could ask Roe to go to all these meetings, but not Terry. Sweet. Oh, there you go. both of them. <laughs> You're tired. I value in the Joint Committee. That felt like a very valuable committee, the Joint Committee. I know, that's what yeah. I, I had said previously, the communication aspect is yeah. important. So that's I think that they, could, they can't require us to attend, but they can invite us to attend. Oh, I got it. It says require. It says require. It says require. Okay, so I guess they can require us. But my sense was that it was more friendly in nature in terms I of the conversation the of the community. Yeah. Apparently the original joint committee was established 
maybe by the mayor. And the Mayor Narkowitz feels that, that that no longer is a reason for this committee. He felt that it had to be dissolved, and then the city council, if they wanted, could establish something, uh, something new. I think that's the cleanest way for the for the charter to figure itself out. I mean, yeah. they they they've got a period of time here where they got to decide how they best use what the new form that yeah. they have to operate under. So, I I, I think that. Those that I've talked to, and I haven't had a lot of conversation about it, but those that I've spoken with about it saw great value of that committee. And, and I think that it's there's a strong likelihood that something will emerge from that, that mm -hmm. they will provide them with the kind of oversight that, uh, that, they, that they feel we provide and, and input from that. So I think, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. Nobody really knows. So we have to establish a reuse committee, uh, the asset management committee for right. these reports but that are just about to come in? Right, but that, that is not on the agenda tonight. Right. But I, we'll have it on for the next agenda item. Okay. I got a communication from the mayor's office today, especially about the reuse committee, <coughs> and making sure that it's on the agenda and, and before a commission vote to establish the subcommittee. Does the mayor have to reappoint these folks here in this room to the commission, or do they just kind of roll over, or what's the story with that? He hasn't told me that. I assume it's a rollover until July 1st, when we're supposed to... They, they actually have in this order about the terms, which is typical of what's been in the past. Every three years, it's a rotation of individuals, mm -hmm. so that every year, another three people are being... Either new people are coming in, or people are leaving one of the two. So that hasn't changed, but um, uh, I'll find out about that. But I believe that his intention is to keep everyone here until July 1st, and or maybe it's till the end of their terms, because there was an appointment by city council. So I'll, get, the, I'll get that defined. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, mean, I, get, I I'm, somehow didn't hear what you said. Did you say that the mayor requested that we reappoint the reuse committee? Yes. Oh, that's that. Yeah. Okay, what about our compensation? Is that going to change? I hope. Oh, I hope not. I mean, that was my big oh, concern. When I, when I found out my job was that the TPC was going away, I, I said, I'm going to miss the mm -hmm. extra income. And what about sick leave in Hong Kong? That too, I hadn't really thought about yeah, that. Yeah. And the insurance plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so. I guess. Was there anything else you hope we talk about at this t at this point? Um, like okay. I said, I've, I'm going through this list of things. Um, I got over Jim. I need to sit down and go through it partially with uh, uh, the mayor's head of staff down there, chief staff, um, Jim Simmons, and then I'll distribute that. It was basically all these commission rules, the establishment of subcommittees, basically how the Department of Public Works and the annual budget review and what I'm hoping to achieve by your advisement out of reviewing budgets, capital plans, and creating the budget. So I'm trying to look at this as no real structural change of what we're doing, except that you don't make recommendations of, um, or actually you don't establish fees, and you don't sign contracts. That's those are the biggest changes that are happening. But uh, you know, historically, I've always appreciated your input and assistance. It's valuable to me. Well, I. I've been wondering if we wouldn't still carry on in, in, um, in, every, in any, in all other ways. In other words, yes, we won't sign contracts, but could we review contracts? Could we do the same process and hear what they are and, and even vote to approve or not or question? You know that, what that seems like from. a valuable exercise. Um, and the same thing with, with uh, uh, some of the other details about um, policy setting rates. Why wouldn't we vet that? At right, meetings? vetting it and advising is yeah. what the intention is. Yeah, yeah the, the, for water, sewer rates, that sort of thing, yeah. the mayor is hoping that they would move forward with our endorsement. Jim? I was just going to say that I, I was talking to David Valletta this afternoon about the contracts. Actually, Ned and I hadn't talked about this, but it's sort of just a general conversation. I think your point about the contracts 
is really good because the thing about the contracts when we bring them in front of the board is it's um, it's a break point to give you an update on everything that we do. So the fact that you won't sign them in the future, you know, is one thing, but the fact that we can still discuss them, um, because actually I, I learned some about some of the things that we're doing within the department because of the contracts that you sign, because Ned does things that I don't get involved in. So in a way it provides a nice update for me, and then some of the, the larger, more complicated contracts, I appreciate the input from, from the board on those. So I, I like Gary's idea. I think it's pretty good. Well, I would second the, the thought that it, it is um, sort of the current events. So there's planning, there's policy setting, there's rate setting, there's all those things. But so, and we know that when it snows, you guys plow, and you know when there's holes in the road, you fix them. But we also know that there are things that are going to be above and beyond the capacity of the department to focus energy uh, and, and equipment <coughs> and manpower to fix specific things, a water main break uh, or replacement of a water main. So that's really a big part of what this department has to do is oversee those larger projects. So I think it would be really terrific if we could continue to hear about that and advise. Mike? I think we ought to leave it to the staff's discretion as to which ones they bring to us, because often there's a timing issue, and, um, and and we don't need to see the chemicals. Well, I, that's right. I think there are a lot, yes. and I think yes, right. I'm sure they recognize which ones we might actually provide some input on. And historically, there are quite a few that we don't. And, um, so I think we ought to leave it to their discretion. I'll miss the pop quizzes on the chemicals, but <laughs> <laughs> well, we could leave those on. Okay. But we could, but we, I'm sorry, I was going to say um, regarding Mike's comment that there are sometimes timing is of the essence, so we could it, we could theoretically move ahead with a contract if we were in a bind, you know, we're always calling in on an emergency basis to sign something, but we could still circle back in the next meeting and, and explain what it was and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, because I do think it's like a current events sort of thing. Like yeah. People might ask us, well, why, you know, what's, why did they close the road? Yeah. Well, I have some general questions, and I don't know if this is the place to bring them up or not, but um, are, is the commission still representing the public? I mean, what is our role in regard to the larger scheme of things for the citizens of Northampton and for, and with regard to what? I mean, we, that's my big question. The, the mayor describes it as almost business as usual. Mm -hmm. um, he hopes that the commission will function like the board function in terms of input, oversight, mm -hmm. advice. A lot of that will come from how the public interprets our <coughs> role, too. And, and as time goes on, I mean, uh, now there's a certain expectation based on history as to what, how the public can interact with the board on important issues that come up. But as time goes on, as the role changes and as the power becomes more vested in the executive and legislative branches as well as the administration here, mm -hmm. I think the pattern of how the public looks for um, that uh, uh, information mm -hmm. will change. And so I think our role will change with that at the time. That will be my guess. Mm -hmm. You know, I, mean, I hope that they, the public still feels comfortable with the fact that we are just advisory and doesn't ignore us. On the other hand, it will kind of be dependent on how we, how seriously we take our responsibility, which seem to me, and where we become, you know, as Mike was saying, some of the things we don't need to know as much about as other things mm -hmm. that would be, help us to be, to be kept informed, as Gary was pointing out. And, you know, I wouldn't want to sit here and not know what's going on. Have have the public uh, not 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 get the information that would allow us to be able to answer the questions yeah. that Gary was suggesting be raised. So, I think that's it's all gonna just take a while to, to play out. But mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any guidebook on what we do mm -hmm. early here. You know, I think we just gotta figure it out as we go. This this document does give some pretty good hints. Um, talking about voting members, forums, uh, meeting documents, you, you still have to do uh, meeting minutes, meeting mem minutes. Um, there'll be public records, 
uh, kept on file. We have to be members of the city. Um, oath of office. Yes, we have to take an oath. With the, the I just did that. <laughs> just did that. Here goes that time thing again. Last night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the answer is, yeah, we represent the public. We're appointed by the mayor. Right. If the mayor doesn't think we can do it, then we're not going to get appointed. So that goes to my next question, which is, are we still bound by the, rule, the legal rules in terms of talking to each other and quorums? And, I mean, public. You're a commission. You're part of a public body. Yeah, yes. I think so. So none of that changes. Okay. I think this document clarified that in my mind, it, because it, we have we have to follow the same rules as yeah. any multi-member body, whether and some of them have decision-making authority, but even though we don't, we need to follow the same rules. Mm -hmm. So in the past, we've adopted certain. We fine-tuned certain procedures, like at one point we decided the chair was not going to vote, mm -hmm. and at another point we we agreed on what a quorum was, not a quorum, what a uh, how many votes you needed to pass mm -hmm. or, or come up with a favorable recommendation. And I would assume we continue. We adopted those. I, I would assume we continue to follow those. Seems reasonable to me. I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I, my, my feeling is the, the value of the board is depending on how vital the board is. If the board is in the middle of it, working hard on stuff, I think that adds to the value and to the credibility of the board. I know you meant commission when you said board. I said wait, commission. <laughs> the PWAC, I yeah. think, has... Where did that A come from? That's the advisory. advisory. Oh, advisory. But I don't think we have to say that. <laughs> that can just be known in That's fine Terry's. Point. Well, <laughs> except that they, have, they distinguish between those three different bodies. That's right. And the one we clear we're not regulatory. Right. But we are a commission. PWAC. Yeah. All right, any other thoughts on this? Okay. Um, commission rules, discussion of advisory role, how it works. Impact of the loss of the bid on the PPW. This was at the request of yeah, I, had to be on the agenda. Yeah, yeah I just, um, well, I, I, for my own benefit, I would like to just, you know, have you kind of describe to me. There's so much, I'm, I'm so involved day in and day out in, in uh, things that seem to uh, center around, uh, uh, that recent decision uh, and all the impacts that that is having and it will continue to have, you know, whether it's raising money to do this or getting people to do that or trying to get people in a room to talk about things. But um, I would be, um, I didn't, in, in, in the interest of becoming better informed, I'd be, I, I'd like to have you describe to me how um, you see the department's um, responsibilities with respect to the greater downtown area. I understand obviously the you know what happens with snow and things like that and sandy and um, but uh, what invariably uh, pops up in any discussion about a way to move forward without the bid is the is uh, the role that the city down to the Department of Public Works might uh, play in that and to best understand what that might be or not be in the future I thought it would be helpful to have you explain to me where, how you see the the present responsibilities. Presently nothing has changed. It's my understanding that the Chamber of Commerce has covered the city uh, with downtown cleanups and snow removal and so on until at least the first of January. Right. After that, I don't know what's going to happen, but if you read through the city ordinances, the property owners, the tenants are responsible for cleaning the sidewalks or clearing snow from the sidewalks. We assume our regular downtown clearing activities on a regular basis as we need to. So it puts actually a big onus back on the property owners downtown that they've actually been paying for for the past five years, or some of them have been paying for. 
where it's going to go. Um, I, when I went to a meeting with the, uh, the mayor staff and uh, some other uh, uh, city employees, basically, if they want to continue the same level of services, they need to fund the department with the same level of people to continue to work down there. Uh, there's no outcome, no yes or no to that, but that's the comment that I made. If you want this to continue, it's a level service and you need to budget staff and resources accordingly to do it, if that's what the city wants to do. Right. And that's, of course, that is, that is, you know, part of what's what's causing all of the consternation. There's been habits that have been, that have been formed by people over, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I think the honor court was established in the early 70s, and, and to a certain extent, as a city, we've been, you know, spoiled by the fact that we've had other options available to us, with the exception of a period of between the uh, suspension of the honor court and the beginning of the bid, where there was a four or five year period where everybody was unhappy with everything. Um, and so I guess my question, the larger point is, I understand the ordinance responsibilities that each uh, merchant has and building owner has with respect to cleaning the streets and cleaning these sidewalks in front of their places of business, and that certainly makes sense, and that's how they're all going to have to approach it after January 1 without the help of uh, even the uh, interim situation that's been set up to get through this holiday period. But as we go forward from there, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the things that happen in, in public meetings uh, where people get together, particularly if they're unhappy walking in the door, is uh, a lot of questions get raised about with impressions that people uh, have a, uh, based on small incidents or in some cases repeated incidents and one of them that comes up all the time is the is the approach the city takes with respect to the um, uh, the downtown and and, uh, and the plowing and then how the the, the the practice for getting rid of the uh, uh, of the snow uh, that collects and, and the way that the streets are plowed and so for my purposes I just was wondering if you could explain what the city I mean it, Sometimes it seems like it languishes there longer than others, and I understand that there's the length of storms and the amount of area that you have to cover in terms of the entire city is substantial, and I don't mean to suggest that it needs to be looked at in a disproportionate way to other responsibilities, but um, so I can better answer. Like that, now I found myself with this advisory board uh, position as being in, in, in participating in so many of these discussions as being the person who they're looking to get these answers from. So I'm looking to see if we can, if I can understand it better from the from the board uh, from the department's perspective. Well, we've been following the the agreement with the bid for the past five or six years, which basically, if we have an aggregate of over eight inches of snow downtown, this one will provide a cleanup activity down there. So um, we have no snow right now, but what happened last year in February was that it warmed up and it would just clog the blowers, so we really couldn't move it that week. We got it the next week when it. When it's set up again, and yeah. that's what cost a lot of angst downtown that we weren't doing our jobs. And, I wish and I'd so asked on. you that before I went to that meeting, because that was the exact question. But yeah, that's a good answer. I wish yeah, that it I softened it. up, and you know, talking with Richie, just the blowers can't move it. Right. When it, when it's set up again, we were able to get down there and move it, but it was a, a week of some angry people. Right. And our commitment is 72 hours. Um. I believe it's 72 hours after that aggregate is done. That's what the mayor says. That's what the mayor says. So, so we have you know, two <laughs> inches of storm where we're going to put in the center. We make sure the heads of the crosswalks are open for visibility of pedestrians and the other critical areas are open up for you know, sight distances. Um, and then we just wait for the next storm. And then the biggest issue that we have is the cleanup activities that happen. They're, all, they're done at nighttime downtown and they're typically usually three or four days after a major event mm -hmm. because the guys have just worked a 30-hour day or 24-hour day and they're resting. Um, so that's part of the issue too. There's always that play that happens too because of that. Okay. So the other question that was raised is that is what is the pattern of activity for uh, or the arrangements, scheduling arrangements I should say, that uh, for street sweeping? Is it done on a regular basis? Is there a certain number of times a month during the that it's done, uh, or other is how is it? How is it? How is it? Planned? Currently, it's done by ward, 
So I know that, I know that. But I mean, with respect to downtown, that's, is it not done on a more regular basis downtown? It is done on a more regular basis downtown. And what would that basis be? Um, I believe during the spring, summer, falls, it's done once a week during that, once, maybe twice a month, mm -hmm. versus the wards get done once, and that's it. Right. So the, the I understand that the rotation of the wards, that's always been the, the right. way that, that that has taken place. So were that to, uh, if it's done twice a month now, if it were to be done once a week, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you'd be able to figure out the impact that that has on staffing and all other, all other uh, requirements. But uh, I guess the, what came up, at least in one discussion I was involved with, um, was the, uh, uh, the having a re have it having things done on a regular interval, mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, there was and more awareness of that on the part of people who complain that it isn't done. Right. You know, so th it's the simple answer is having an answer to the to the question right. once and posed. Now that I have asked you about it, I, if I'd known I was going to be asked all these questions when I went to the meeting, I'd have spoken to you beforehand. But I just happened to be there, and boom, I hit with an eye. And in the wintertime, it's a very less frequent schedule because you have the freezing water in the machines. Right. So right. we do a sweep after uh, the uh, New Year's Eve event. Right. And that's really about it for the rest of the winter. So the freezing water in the machines, which picks up the, the debris and everything, is a is an issue that uh, affects how often it's able to be done in the winter. Right. Mm -hmm. Is this the water that's contained in the machine for, for, for dust, dust control? control? Yeah. Hmm. And what's the alternative to that? Dust? No. Is there is there ways of <laughs> is there ways of yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there Thank ways you. of being able to to uh, not uh, have those machines freeze up? You could actually purchase a, a vacuum device, a vacuum truck of some sort that could do it. Right. That might not have that same type of agitation of materials. And there is one of those now that the bit has, right? I don't know what the bid has for a particular piece of equipment. I think they do have one that does that, and I'm just because uh, that also came up, and it was also suggested that you know what's going to happen with that. So I'm just wondering: is there no one's had a discussion with you about any? I haven't heard of anything yet. Hmm. The equipment was going to be able to be used by the Department of Public Works, or right. Well, then, it, then it becomes a personnel issue. I understand, but uh, at some point, I think what's going to happen, quite frankly, and the mayor is obviously the one who's spearheading all of this. Because he needs to find a solution, isn't there going to? There's going to need to be. He's no doubt going to be asked to have provide some kind of accounting of what the added costs are that would mm -hmm. represent what has otherwise take, been taking place by these two separate organizations, the Honor Court and the Bid. And um, while there's certainly some recent uh, information available on the basis of what the Bid has been spending from their budget, um, it'll. No doubt, be something will be asked of the department as well, and um, and you know, and I guess my final question, because this was also raised, would be um, in in both of your experiences with interacting with other s communities, uh, it was suggested by people at this at this meeting that that it was a, typically a responsibility of the of the board of public works to do um, the kind of things that. Many in, those, in that meeting were suggesting be done uh, without definition now. You know, and I, I, obviously there's things that are being done, and obviously it's not being ignored. But at the same time, um, people's impression, uh, particularly those who did not favor the pit, is that the city should be uh, doing more. How do other cities handle it, to the best of your knowledge? Taking care of their downtowns. Cities of similar size. Would you have any way of knowing that? I don't know offhand, but I, I believe other cities have bids that have worked, so others have bids that have failed. Yeah. Well, I don't mean the bids part of it. Without bids, out of those cities, cities that do not have bids, are there, is there any, have you had any in the course know. of your experience? Isn't, isn't it a question of the funding on the part of the city? If the city wants it to be done by the DPW, it requires funding. Oh, no question about that. And yeah. there's a lot of people who are so, saying so it's that. it's not our. Yeah. Decision, really. Well, not, I'm not saying decision. I just the, the, the information that to be able to uh, understand the what that cost might be would be, you know, helpful. And, and uh, uh, you know, we've had a 
to a certain extent. We've had a charmed life here for the better part of 40 years not having to do that mm -hmm. or having to have any um, responsibility for it whatsoever. So there's a cost that comes with replacing that, no doubt. And where that money comes from is ultimately going to be the mayor's problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm just trying to get a grasp of mm -hmm. what those things are and whether there's any frame of reference for that those expenditures that we might be able to lean on and say, well, this is, you know, do such and such. Obviously, people are, anytime you have people doing more, it involves paying those people and the costs that come with the employment consequences. Um, mm -hmm. I understand that, but it just, you know, it, 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 you saw the, the arguments around that whole issue and they were, a lot of it had to do with the fact that the city wasn't, should be doing what, what uh, property owners are being asked to do uh, to supplement that. A small increase in the business tax rate would provide plenty of funding for new staff and probably you know, clean everything up down there. Or the parking fund, or, or some, some uh, that's been another discussion. I mean, you mean, you mean the, the, the factor of one, is that what you're talking about, changing that? Well, I think that... It's a little out of school, I'm just a city engineer, I don't <laughs> no, actually no, I know, but I mean, the factor of one is something that, we're, that we, we've long had in place in the city. It's clearly a funding issue, I mean, that's, yeah. we do what we can with the staff that we have. And, oh yeah, and I don't doubt that, and I, and I, I completely understand because I've got a frame of reference that covers that entire span of time in terms of staffing. But at the same time, there's uh, not everybody does, and a lot of people are are uh, not as familiar with what uh, uh, practices might be with what their own observation of things is. So I think that if there's a way that we can quantify that to everybody's advantage in, in terms of understanding these things better, we'll all be better off than me. Maybe row you to thought. That's okay, so I have two thoughts now because the pet talks so long. But, um, <laughs> my, one thought is his comments, I like a lot of your comments, and I think it's important to, to respond to them. But I'm wondering also if there's legislative or ordinance implications, too. And I, and I don't know in terms of changing what we do or what the city expects us to do. So it's just a comment in terms of stone removal, in terms of our responsibilities because for so long it's been very divine, divine, defined by property owners. And is that an ordinance? Is that it is an ordinance? Yeah. Both snow removal and sweeping. Yeah. In fact, yeah. in the sweeping part of it, they're they're not even allowed to sweep the material into the street. Right. They're supposed to pick it up. Right. Yeah. No. Right. We never did that. <laughs> Always into the street. Right. And then we we have the street streets. We could come to and yeah. clear it all up. Yeah. So my, my point is, besides the financial issues, there may be legislative issues as well. And, and then I had, is there any comment on that? I had another, okay. So then the other one was, aren't there some new rules about street sweeping that come in line with the stormwater um, uh, regulations that you have, that we have to street sweep more often? And frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it won't be more than we already do downtown. All right, just asking. Yeah, I mean across the city it will be more, but downtown it won't be, it won't be in excess of what we've historically done. Okay. Yeah. Plus, plus there's, we don't use sand anymore, right? We use just salt? Or is, am I wrong about that? That should be used on organic base, uh, organic base snow de-icer with our salt. We don't use sand anymore. Right. So and because of the disposal costs of bringing it for daily cover to a landfill, yeah. cleaning catch basins. Right. That's what I was thinking, cleaning. So the need for sweeping in some ways has been mitigated by the reduction in use of sand. And I don't want to rush the parts to clean up um, As I recall, the pedal people pick up the trash on the streets, and mm -hmm. that was a contract with the bid or with the parking? That's with parking and central services. So that will stay in place? I believe it's a three-year contract they have in place. But I mean, the regulations don't change that. Some, they could contract with somebody else if they want to, but that's, that's correct. probably their responsibility. Into those central ser yes, central yeah. services yeah. runs that contract. I was pretty sure that's just parking. So the, I mean, just get back to the point of uh, what the ordinances are that are in place. I mean, those have been in place forever. It's been handled very differently over the span of time mm -hmm. by by people. And uh, Terry is a now former downtown merchant. As I am. It's as just as well as you, as you guys were. So, uh, I mean, it's it. I think that part of what um, 
the bid was trying to address when first established, if I remember correctly, was having some consistency mm -hmm. to those, to the uh, clearing of snow and, the, and, uh, and all the things that come with a lot of people. And um, so I think that that's, you know, at the heart of trying to come up with a, a solution here for the downtown in a way that can be done yeah. is not dependent on whether, you know, the person next to you <coughs> takes care of the rice as quickly as, you know, you did and yeah. people fall. So it's it's but it it's been very inconsistent over the years in terms of how it was mm -hmm. handled and, and everyone was thrilled when the when the honor court came on on board. Mm -hmm. So uh, this pattern of, of of having expectations confuses the discussion mm -hmm. when you're trying to look to solutions mm -hmm. because people have their own selective memories about what they think mm -hmm. it was done and how it should have been done, and 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 you know one consistent theme seems to be well the city. It's got to do it. Okay, mm -hmm. so that falls on David, and I do think it, it ends up coming back and having some impact on on this department. So, uh, and the, to the funding question, which is really the, the, the most important part of it all. I mean, mm -hmm. I look. I my personally think that the that the parking fund is 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 where that needs to be addressed. I think that they need to increase the parking fees, which are normally something that are that are uh, met with with a great objection by the merchants, but I don't think they will be in this case if that money is to otherwise be directed to this mm -hmm. very same effort. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that happens. I hope that's, a, that's part of the solution to this thing. Just a question. How is this handled in Florida, <coughs> this whole situation of sweeping? I don't think it's different. I mean, Florence, uh, I've always felt they did a great job in keeping Florence cleaned up. It was, uh, I, you know, you don't have to sit Yeah. The the, 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 the city does. I mean, the sweeping is always. My, I'm always saying, "Geez, I didn't realize it swept that much." That's uh, because Jim is on the floor, the big steering committee for Florence, right? I own a broom. And a shovel. But we do all of our own walks, you know, and the same thing. You take care of our own walks, of course. Mm -hmm. It's not anybody that does it. Uh, was never done by the honor court. Now, although I do think the honor court did come up at, at one point, when, and as a matter of fact, they, they had their headquarters up there. Say, right, right there yeah. yeah, and there was, uh, and so, so they did have some involvement with it, but I don't think it was nearly as extensive as it was downtown. Mm -hmm. And no, even after Bill Nagel died, the honor court went on for a number of years under different leadership, so went almost up to the year 2000, I think, and then the bid was, what, six or seven years? So here we are. So there was a gap of five or six mm -hmm. years there. It was really pretty. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody mm -hmm. is agreeing on. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. not acceptable. Mm -hmm. anyway, I, I, it may, it's it's bound to be something that that uh, will you guys ought to provide some input on. So I'm just trying to share with you the kind of comments that seem to be out there flying around. You can see them in the paper anyway. But um, it's there's no easy answers. Thanks. Um, all right. Next year's budget. Um, we're going to get starting on it probably this month, early next month. Hopefully, we'll start having our meeting sometime late February. Or excuse me, late January, early February. So, just to let you know, it's that time of year again. I would assume that you'd want the morning meetings again, like we did in the past. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see if we could get. It, at least for a conversational approach. Um, a few years ago, I was making some reports to the city council about our water and sewer rates, and I asked uh, Ned to ask Anne Marie if she could tease apart the money necessary to, I call it, turn on the lights. Just the basic fuel, heat, electricity, um, basic salaries, to just run the place. And I don't think anyone is really uh, concerned that that money is <coughs> inappropriate. Or, I mean, we don't need to dig into the, the fund for buy, purchasing diesel fuel. The part that's really kind of interesting is the other more discretionary spending. How are we going to, what, ta what projects are we going to tackle next year, next mm -hmm. fiscal year? Um, how were those chosen? Mm -hmm. uh, do, does it make sense to be tackling something large in several enterprise funds simultaneously. It, that's the kind of conversation I think I'd love to, to, have, to have happen here. I'm just tossing that out, but as I say, I don't think the issue is 
uh, some of the more regular expenses. It's uh, discretionary expenses. Are these morning meetings recorded like this one? Yes. And we invite people, strangely, oh, no God, 8 o'clock in the morning, you crazy? No, just responsible. Um, all right, so that'll have start happening in January? Um, I believe so. Yeah. Late January. Um, I don't think there are any unforeseen uh, topics this evening. Then we're on to the uh, reuse center. The electricians have been there. Yeah. And, you know, they work very rapidly. And com it's complete. Um, it's pretty good lighting. No, no Great. complaints on anybody's part. And the uh, overhead door crew has been there. This was maybe a week or 10 days ago, and, mm -hmm. and they're all done. Mm -hmm. So things are pretty pretty well finished. I, I'm not close enough to it to say what small things are not done. But, but thank you, celebration to crew and people that worked on it. Right. And yeah, you were there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was there a couple Saturdays ago for yeah. that. Nice yeah. little get together of the volunteers and a little tour of the facility. And you approved the payment for pizza I hear too. I tried to. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> So, are they going to, is it going to become operational during the winter season? Or no, is this gearing up towards spring? It's gearing up towards spring at this point. Bring, Bring your own heat. Yeah, okay. yeah. They've got a beautiful little office space in there. They set up the, it was part of the old SolidWorks Solutions headquarters inside there. Um, very, very nicely done. Yes. And so, oh, go ahead. Just asking an anticipated grand opening? In the spring. When did you say, David? Yeah, yeah. 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 A little hard to paint right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they want to have a presentation for the city council too. Um, just we are having another meeting tomorrow morning. So, is there any message from here? The message from the mayor that he definitely wants to be <coughs> in the formal committee mm -hmm. and the commission. Any other things? <coughs> I, I know from talking to one of the people that she organized donations from businesses, things that they were no longer using. Macy's, um, <coughs> the leftovers from the Macy's parade, shop window displays, that sort of thing. Um, this, there's a woman who moved up here from New York. Um, will the, the volunteers begin accumulating merchandise, material? I don't know the answer to that because it depends on it having sufficient room and having the construction moving farther along. So okay. that's a good question. I mean, the, yeah. some things could be put in storage there, yeah. or is mm -hmm. it not that secure? Um, there's doors on it. I don't yeah. think they're locked, but there's doors on it. It might be an interesting question. To mm -hmm. We have to have storage first. So. Yeah. And, there, and, and we've made rules for, for what can be accepted and what can't. Well, we're working on right the business plan. So right, but we haven't trained progress. people. That's the bigger right. thing. But also, the, 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 the topic hasn't been thoroughly discussed yeah. or, uh, yeah. to the point of agreement. Mm -hmm. But we're close but to we, being able to offer the group store uh, um, dry, secure storage. Um, it's not well secure while the landfill's closed. We believe, but it's kind of open air too. Like the doors aren't locked. On the building itself, the they presumably could be. Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know all those details. We could probably do a door lock. Yeah, I think you so. Know, <coughs> yeah, like but, but my po my point is that we could we could promise them dry, secure storage mm -hmm. in the reasonably near future. Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. Anything else, Andrew? All right, uh, private ways. I think I <coughs> understand that Ned has found some more. <laughs> oh, great. So, um, Chair and I went to City Council last Thursday night and we discussed the ones that had no recommendation from the Board of Public Works, which were Puckett Avenue, Park Avenue, Hebert Avenue, and Center Court. 
Um, the City Council has directed uh, the department to create plans and documents for making Center Court a public way. So we're working with the surveyor now to define the entire area within there with some detailed topo so we can understand drainage flows and so on and look at what we can do to create a public way in there. I had a conversation with Roger Saloon the other day, actually yesterday, about this, too. He didn't realize the council had voted that way, and he's pretty excited. I told him that we've had our direction change. So, the other three streets that were recently passed by the council were Cook Avenue, Massasoit Avenue, and Clark Avenue. It was at second readings on Thursday night. So, if I remember right, I believe we have nine left to go at our summer at Alan Seawall's office, the city solicitor. Some we're still waiting for some documents from the surveyor on. So we're winding down the process. I did send letters to all the bottom roads of butters about getting together with them and discussing where we're going to do the termination of the right of way, um, not the right of way, excuse me, the public way. And um, I heard back from two of the butters at this point and still have a few more to go. So hopefully in another week or two, I can figure out where we're going to stop bottoms road. Is everyone approximately familiar with where this is at? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. There was an outstanding question about um, whether or not frontage would be created on Bottoms Road. There would be. be. There would be. Yep. But, but they proposed moving it, pulling it back, which would cut off one of the properties from being okay. included frontage. there. Um, did, did the planning department want to hold out on Pocket Avenue uh, with the hopes that someday a rail trail spur could be... It was Hebert Avenue. Hebert, I'm sorry. Yes. Hebert. Uh, Wayne Fyden was there and he was um, silent on the matter. Oh. Okay. We're a bit of a trouble time with the tail on right there. Pardon me? It depends on what, how you define that. <laughs> It was interesting. The vote on Center Court was interesting. Farm going on there. It was a. Um, they structured it so the vote was to accept our negative recommendation, and it uh, failed by virtue of being a tie. So by not accepting a recommendation, they've asked. It, implicit in that is that we have to go back and revisit it. And I've heard from a couple of city councilors that they're open to a proposal, like. Property owners fix the drainage issues. We, I mean, so this is we have some flexibility, I think, here well, to make to this work. Yeah. Well, we, we, at one point with Center Court, we talked about whether or not there was a betterment that could be assessed. That's correct. We looked at a betterment assessment at one point, or kind of discussed it briefly. We never gave them anything to react to. Them. We never right. followed through with. How about this? Well, I mean, I, I think our point was that no, it's not a public way, but if it were to become more public, I mean, a betterment might be a way to fund some of the improvements that mm. need to be happening right. in that little Yeah. And then the onus comes up. I mean, the onus is now on the city council to make the decision, but then the idea that, uh, well, we were trying to go is just try to be consistent mm -hmm. and, and fair to everybody in the process of doing this. We don't have to worry about that, so that is an interesting direction. Yep. And then, aren't there some title issues down there? I don't know of any title issues offhand. Hmm. I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we ought to have a conversation. <laughs> well, the surveyors will find it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, comprehensive wastewater management plan and the water system master plan. Kind of a similar topic here. Those are. I put those on there because I just wanted the commission to know we had all these exciting things going on that we needed your involvement with, um, and that was the main thing. I guess the uh, the comprehensive wastewater plan. We had a a board subcommittee helping us with that. That project got delayed a little bit because I haven't had time to work on some of the aspects of the um, prioritization of the capital improvement plan. So we had some meetings, Gary and Mike and David, right? On, the, on that, so there's, we need to set up a, a subsequent meeting with you, if that's going to be continue to be the sort of the subcommittee to go over um, what projects have been advanced and prioritized since you looked at the whatever the 50 million 
dollar list or whatever it was you looked at the last time we got together. <coughs> we'll be needing to do that soon, so I'll be in touch with you about trying to set up a meeting so we can talk about that more. But we're going to need the full commission to get involved in looking at the report as it's finalized and scheduling public meetings and presentations to have a little bit more outreach about the magnitude of the work because um, as these three would know, it's millions of dollars in the next 20 years, some of it one in 10 years, to really upgrade a plant that's falling apart or has fallen apart. So it's important work. It's lagged a little bit because I haven't had a chance to kind of keep it moving the last few weeks, but we're trying to get that moving. And then the water system master plan. Back in the fall, we were going to have um, Don Tata come in and make a presentation of the report that his firm did about a year ago for us. We never had them come in front of the board. We had to cancel a couple of times for various reasons. So I just wanted to put that back out there to find out if we wanted to have Don come back in and make a presentation on the contents of the report so you can see the information that's in there and how we're using it or, uh, um, and how we're going to try to keep that up to date as we move forward. So if you have dates, maybe maybe after the holidays would be the most appropriate time to think about having Don come in. Um, I think Terry had actually suggested we do it at the water plant or something like that in a, in a, in a different location. See it again. Mm -hmm. uh, seemed like a good and similarly, the wastewater could be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I wanted to, to just to raise those things as a couple of important um, things that we're working on right now. We need to work together on those. And to the extent that any of that stuff moves forward in the next fiscal year, that's the sort of thing where I'm talking about peeling apart how we're approaching the discretionary side mm -hmm. of the budget as opposed to the just turn the lights on side yeah. of the budget. <clears throat> That's a good question, I and mean, this is somewhat related, but really not. Just popped in my head. Is is there any information available that would um, uh, that has addressed the cost of extension of water and sewer um, versus the uh, benefit, uh, the dollars, re the return of dollars that uh, come from the from the extension of such utilities? In other words, uh, there, there's, uh, you know, uh, areas of the community that are that are uh, uh, not on public utilities, mm -hmm. and were those to be extended and fees then, as a consequence, paid by those users, uh, is there are there any sources of information as to the relative cost of extending those those utilities versus the income that would come in from that? If, if I could just jump in a little bit. What we've done most recently, Pat, is done a betterment. For example, on Marion Street, they paid for the sewer to be put in. Mm -hmm. And the oper the fees are primarily going to the operation of the plant right. and the service rendered. So, okay. So, and there's a cost of doing that. And then there's a... Which the, which the residents paid with a betterment. Okay. So they, they paid the capital cost through a betterment. And right. then we charge them... But if the city were to initiate that, so, I'm right. saying. so we know what the cost of that is. That's a, there's a cost per hundred feet of extending water and sewer, mm -hmm. I assume. So you could figure out what that cost is, and I'm, I'm just wondering because there's areas of the community that I'm just curious as to whether that would, whether what the payback on that would be for well, doing it. Well, having the payback and having a need are two different things. I mean, it's nice to be on city sewer, but through the comprehensive wastewater management plan, they didn't identify any areas of dire need. Where we need to extend sewer services into mm -hmm. the water system is pretty much extended. It's full capacity. almost as far as it can go elevation wise right. in the yeah. city. Yeah. And you get out to the bottom of Route 66, right. Kings Hill. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. where it stops. Yeah. And then when you get out into the yeah. Sylvester Road area, you probably could get water out there, but at the cost of you know 30 homes. Mm. I don't know where the payback comes off of that. Well, that's what I'm just. That, that was my my question. I don't know what the payback is in terms of because water rates or sewer rate, water rates and sewer rates, of course, are related. So there's a way of being able to quantify that. I would think. Mike. I was going to say my experience is that um, there is no payback on <coughs> extending a sewer line. It just costs a lot more than you get in in revenue from the users, mm -hmm. unless you consider. Um, the homeowners avoided cost of fixing their septic system in the future. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I think that's where veterans come in because right. they get they get that financial benefit of avoiding that cost. So yes. Generally, communities ask them to pay now right. to avoid that future cost. But otherwise, I, I don't think it would ever show that we could break even um, by extending the sewer and then getting that additional right. revenue. Well, the area I was I was thinking of in my own head is is not so much for residential use as it is for like along Route 10. You know, under the South Street Bridge. I know that that project, 15 years ago, when I was on the City Council. There was a study done on, right. by Huntley Associates. Right, right. And and I remember that, and I remember that that there was a number that came as a result of that study, and there was some funding that we had made uh, back when Jane Garvey was head head of the state DPW, the state DPW, um, and uh, that provided us with a with a uh, uh, a certain amount of funding that the city had to then provide a, a match for. Mm -hmm. And uh, the betterment that you're talking about was uh, uh, the plan that was, was proposed for making all of the property owners along that stretch of, of route, route 10 from the South Street Bridge out to the East Hampton Line kick in. And there was one of the property owners who uh, objected to that and stirred up the whole pot and they all objected and said they wouldn't do it, so that never got done. But, I mean, to me, that's an area that brings potential for some significant right. there significant tax, tax base growth. There was a concept of having an office park out there at one point. I remember mm -hmm. looking at that right. 12, 13 years yeah. ago. Yeah. And I believe one of the big pieces of land that was part of that has just been sold into conservation land. Probably the Sanderson 66. piece? I forget the name of the parcel, but it was off of Route 66, uh, Sandy's. Yeah, Sanders. Sanderson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. what it was. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. But the bigger piece is the one that's, that's that, that runs along um, the Lipshire piece that runs all the way from the old dump to where the to the East Hampton Line, mm -hmm. with the exception of that that uh, what used to be nursing home and I don't know daycare now. Uh, no, uh, Smith. Um, it's pre preschool. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that uh, we don't have any areas of to have the potential for special industrial growth mm -hmm. uh, in Northampton, and I think that that does. And so I'm just curious as to whether there is any <coughs> is there any formula for that. I don't know when they did the study that's 15 years old. We probably could, you know, look at that and make some estimates. But uh, I mean, I think Mike kind of hit the nail on the head in terms of. The estimates from a rate structure standpoint, if there are other economic development opportunities from the city, from that perspective, that might be more of a Terry Masterson style study than something that we would do. Yeah. As but we start with that, though. As Ned had mentioned in the comprehensive wastewater management plan, one of the questions came up, or part of the scope of that is, you know, do you, is the city interested in looking at extending the sewer system for any reason? And there were different things that were looked at. Um, within that study, and for the most part it was based on need, failing septic systems or other yeah. areas of bad soil, that sort of thing, right? So. Yeah, I can understand that. And that, that, that is a, a smaller scale than what I'm talking about though in terms of development. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, it might be worth just a, an update in terms of, um, you know, uh, what it might cost these days, you know. I know that the the, uh, it's not cheap because I know the prices that we've been getting on some of the you know, subdivisions that I'm involved with is six to seven hundred dollars a lineal foot for uh, uh, subdivision roads. So that just starts to tell you there's there's sixty to seventy thousand dollars for it's a hundred foot lot. It's you money know, money, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of it, it's a lot of money. I understand all of that, but at the same time, there's no opportunity for tax based growth in this community unless we, you know, um, get involved in trying to provide it because they're not going to make any more of it. You know, and this would make some more. And that's been underutilized for a long time. You don't have to go any further than the East Hampton Town Line to see what they've done along their same stretch of land, theoretically, to uh, with providing utilities. And so it may make some sense to just look at it as, as we go on in our advisory way. Yeah, it's an interesting well, I mean, I've sometimes wondered about fire flows for water. Thinking, is that something that should be on the water ratepayers? Is the wastewater ratepayer 
<coughs> responsible for driving development. You know, it's kind of an interesting philosophical. Mm. It'd be nice to have some direction from the city council or the mayor's office to drive the, yeah, the I think inevitable multi-thousand dollar study. <laughs> that we're going to it probably does fall on Terry Masterson's you know, uh, turf, but uh, at the same time, it's going to so it's going to come back here to say, well, you know, what would that cost? And I think we had a $3 million number back then, if I may be Yeah, I don't recall. Yeah. Anyway, and that was a lot of it was under the South Street Bridge the cost of doing that. Should have built it then, $3 yeah. million. Bucks. Yeah. <laughs> should have done it. It's going to cost $3 million to get over the road. Signed Lester in the spring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, did you say everything you wanted to say about the, the two plants? I did. And when are, when are they going to hit the uh, this room? Well, the water the advisory master, committee. The water the water master plan has been done for the better part of a year. Um, various, I think David has borrowed somebody's borrowed copies from me of that report. We had copies floating around um, at some and point. Can we get CDs for PDF maybe of that original document, electronic copy, maybe mm -hmm. it was made available, I forget. It's been a while now, yeah. but we never had a presentation anyway no. to talk about it. Um, and then the, the comprehensive wastewater management plan will be done as soon as we get the board back engaged in um, sort of the end part of it, which is the 20-year capital plan and looking at the numbers and then it's uh, some public input and presentations and then sort of finishing up the document. So they've made tremendous, done a tremendous amount of work. We had the preliminary on that, right? We just had one chapter <coughs> presented on the wastewater. No? I don't think the whole board did. I know the subcommittee yeah. has gone through most of the sections of the report. Okay. But I don't recall it coming to the board. Oh, okay. No, I don't know. Okay. And it's really these last sections that it's, it's a very large document, um, but it's the last sections that are that pull everything together, right? So those will be the ones that everyone's going to want to look at. Okay. So that could be, I'm sorry, so it could be, uh, we'd like it to be early next year to wrap up the CWMP. We're actually behind schedule. We'd like to kind of round up the contract and have the plan done and then, um, you know, start having wider discussions about the capital improvement plan the next five year, 10 year period and what that's going to take. And do you see parts of either one of these plans making it into the next uh, fiscal year 16 budget? Um, little bits. Little bits. So that's the, probably the, I mean, the beginning of, of the conversation. Yeah, I mean, part of the problem that we're having, I think, is that we have a lot of work to do and we can only manage so many capital projects so I'm, I'm trying to be more use more discretion about how we identify capital projects to put in the to put in the budget if we can't actually do them because the expectation once they're there is that they'll get done um, we have a weekly superintendents meeting with Ned and just in the meeting the other day David Valletta rattled off what our 2015 construction season is going to look like and we have somewhere around 15 capital projects that are going to be bad and up and, and starting and it's it's, too much. it's like yeah. a mind-boggling amount of work yeah. and so you know we're trying to weigh those things um, in terms of how aggressive we get and the thing about I don't mean to go on too much here but the comprehensive wastewater management plan one of the things that I'm trying to do right now is to parse out what projects what are all the projects that need to be done? And it's sort of a combination of affordability and your ability to break them up. So some projects may be very big by their very nature, but there may be other projects that could be linked and maybe, maybe either separated or brought together in a group. So the amount of work that we take on in any of those projects is a function of how much we can afford, how much do we think we can afford, and whether a large project, a large project can be broken up into multiple years and whether it makes sense to do that. Mm -hmm. There's so much work at the plant, it's really, but it's it's all so very expensive <coughs> too. That's really w where the difficulty is gonna lie and the subcommittee has is, is seen it when we were talking about some of the projects and, and the value of them and you know what order do you do and how do you group them and what makes sense. Um, it might be good to also get a, 
this might be worth a, a budget or a, um, an agenda item. Be interesting to get for us to be brought up to date on where we stand with things that have already been in the par pipeline. For example, is the, the backup generator for the wastewater plant, is that totally done, not done, funded but waiting? Uh, have we uh, taken care of the groundwater infiltration in the pump room? Where does that stand? Mm -hmm. There's probably, a, Dave Valletta could rattle off another list of things that trail yeah. back for the last couple of years that haven't been finished. Or we, we don't, kind of don't, it's invisible to us where those stand. Right. And we could do that. I mean, in some of the some of their projects that I'm doing, some of them are the ones that David is managing with other people in engineering. But we could provide an update, you know, on, on all those. Uh, but we're trying to obviously there's a backlog, and we're trying to get to those. We have a little bit of a backlog within the stormwater and flood control utility as well because we've got a new funding source. We added a few projects that need to be done. We didn't add any staff to do them to do more work. So I'm looking at it like, well, this is fun. You know, um, <laughs> so we're trying to get some of those off the ground, um, and we will, but it's, you know, you have no idea where they are because we don't give you a routine update unless there's a contract that comes in front of you that says, well, we want to hire this engineer or we want to hire this contractor, so you, you wouldn't know. So but we could, but could we, we get a, an update on all of these? Yep. These are projects that have been funded in the last couple of years. And I just wanted to add to that, it seems like we made some decisions based on I mean, we deferred some decisions or on, on funding because we thought this was going to happen quicker. Am I not remembering correctly? Say it in a different way. Okay. That we, when various funding opportunities came up for machinery, we said, but when we do the wastewater management plan, then we'll have a better idea. And so we deferred some decision making. Right, because we don't want to spend money today. Right, and then that's we spend in, it's it not spent right yeah. for something we may not need, or, or it's just a change in direction. Yeah, um, something at the plant we want to do differently in the future. We don't want to just replace what we have if we're gonna if there's a wider implication. That's the important part of having the plan, so you can look at mm -hmm. you can look at everything. Right. But you are right. Okay. So the you you were. Suggesting, I, if I heard it correctly, that um, that there's certain in Carrie's questions, there's certain uh, projects that are underway that this update would provide us with some um, idea of what those would, what the progress on those has been. And then you said that um, that David has a list of 15. Are those wastewater? No, they're all projects within engineering that we're managing. So some of them are water projects, some of them are wastewater projects, some okay. of them are streets projects. So, um, okay, are any of them stormwater? They are. They are yeah. Okay. So, with the with the uh, and obviously all that impacts on staffing and then the ability to get those out. And um, if they're already, are these all funded? They are. Okay. So, we've got funded projects that may have some some maybe limited by virtue of the fact that we have so many and others ongoing. And it may be a staffing related uh, issue or impact. Uh, do you then farm those out in terms of, of uh, the engineering needed to get those moving forward? We, we use consultants to help us with design, with things that we can't design in house, either because of expertise or time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but every time we hire a consulting engineer, that's something that we need to manage. Right. So to think that we can hire an engineer and that project just sort of manages itself is, is, is far from. It's far from a way of, right. of reality. Um, every time we hire an engineer, we have to look out for the city's best best interest in terms of how the design gets done, that it's meeting right. our needs, that it's being done in an appropriate way. Um, and that's really, it takes time to do that. And um, yeah. and it takes a lot of time. So with the stormwater management fee, uh, and this may be more appropriate question for when the budget hearings take place, with the stormwater management fee uh, 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 funds, I should say, that are now being accumulated, uh, are there any uh, anticipated uh, staffing increases that come with, with, with those funds that will be of assistance with what you're describing? Uh, not specifically. Hmm. So are we, are we asking for, 
for stormwater management funds to do projects that we can't service? I haven't said that we can't service them yet. Um, I'm saying that the workload is probably, we've added workload without adding staff. So we're trying to manage that with the people that we have. Within the stormwater and flood control utility, we mainly need a superintendent level position to manage that system overall, which we haven't put in place. And we need rank and file employees to do some of the work um, in the field that um, we're in the process of hiring people right now. But we need to reevaluate and continue to evaluate our engineering division in terms of the people that we have. Fortunately, we have people, we have highly skilled engineering division that can manage complicated projects. In addition to the ones that I manage, we have people, David Valletta is one of them, who can manage a complicated project and do a good job at it. But as we add more and more, particularly when we look at the wastewater plant, some of these projects are very expensive and complicated. You want highly competent staff to manage those sorts of projects. So we, we have talked on and off about whether we need to have a capital projects manager <coughs> once we get into a multi-year capital improvement plan at the wastewater plant, for example. That could be a full-time position and it could be a lot more than I can do given all the things that, I'm, that I do for the city. So do we need to add you know, another capital projects manager engineer that would manage a lot of these large expensive projects or is there a way we can somehow use the existing staff that we have? Um, but we've, as these plans the water plan has been completed, the comprehensive wastewater plan gets completed, and with the new funding for stormwater and flood control, there's a lot of projects that come out of those. And then the other thing is with the mayor's commitment to improving, improving streets within the city, we're spending more money on streets improvements and paving, street reconstruction, all those things are terrific, they're great initiatives, but then you look at the people that you have to manage it and how can you manage all of these things for the people that you have. And we have a good sized engineering division for, for a city our size. We're very qualified and we're very good people. But even the amount of work that we do and how hard we work, um, there's still projects that lag. This, the people that have been on the board for a while have seen some projects that have been funded. It could take two or three years for them to actually, to, for them to get built. Yeah, you know, I just think in terms of all, the, all of the uh, uh, work that Terry did and others uh, promoting the need for the stormwater management and uh, with the suggestion certain uh, long overdue projects were going to be dealt with um, uh, don't get attended to uh, as expeditiously as they might otherwise with these with the addition of a superintendent as you suggest that maybe this is the time budget wise to think about how a, the addition of a superintendent under the circumstances that we're describing here today might make some sense it would make some sense yeah. thanks So we're at that point in the meeting where I asked Gary, is there anything you wanted to talk about? Did you touch on? No. Yeah. Good. Well, Good. Set. Well, set. Yeah. Well, set. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. You are? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Terry, you're so quiet today. I said at the beginning of the meeting we just started, but uh, the feedback on the uh, DW's response to the storm the other day was excellent. So thank you. Well, set. I wanted to thank you for moving the crosswalk on South Street. Thank you. Do you like it? Better. Really? Yeah. It, the traffic is much different than the one. Okay. You ground out the old one, right? Mm -hmm. it's best yeah. we could. Best you could, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, a lot of people are still like they're still sneaking over there. Yeah, well, just to to take a while. <laughs> there, there, uh, there was a uh, agenda item on the transportation and parking commission hearing coming up to um, Rewrite the ordinance to add a parking space where the crosswalk was. So that, I think that yeah. will help too. That would, yeah, good idea. It's painted that way. Yeah. Oh, it's already painted? Oh. Yeah. So, one thing I was going to ask today, and Dick alluded to it earlier in, in his public comments. Um, so, you and I had talked last year about mm -hmm. this year we're going to track the use of enterprise employees on snowplow. Yep just so we have a, 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 enough data to have a discussion at mm -hmm. some point. Yep. Okay, we're on board with that? Great. Well, I got it. Move to adjourn. Wait, can we do that in the commission? The PWAC yeah. can do anything it wants. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.